Hello everyone, my name is Chad Furman and I recently joined the Ansible team as the new product manager. And when I joined the team, the first thing I realized was we did not have a really quick, easy way for people to start kicking the tires on the new Ansible automation platform. So what I did was create a quick GitHub and this blog to show you guys how to do it. So first off, what you're going to do is install CodeReady containers, which is just a kind of mini version of OpenShift, and then you'll use the Ansible Automation Platform operator within CodeReady to deploy Ansible Automation Platform. So first thing you'll need to do is go to the GitHub that's linked in the blog, and then click on this button right here that says Download. And then once you're in there, go ahead and choose which operating system you are. If you're on a Mac, it'll give you a package you can install. I'm going to do this on Linux so I can show you how to run it from there. I've already downloaded it. Okay, now that we have untarred it, let's go into that directory. Let's move it to cpe2 slash bin. Okay, so now we can just run CRC. First thing it's gonna do, of course, is give you a bunch of information. Let's just do a CRC setup. Follow the directions. So it's going to go ahead and set up everything, install, make sure that you have virtualization packages like libvirt if you're running on, on Linux. If you're running it on a Mac, it'll validate that you have a Hive. And then if you're on Windows, it'll make sure that you have Hyper-V enabled. And then we're going to pause here because this, this bit takes a little while. Be right back. Okay, depending on your bandwidth, that may have taken a little bit. Sorry about that. It is about an 11 gig file, but what it's actually doing is pulling down a QCOW image with OpenShift already installed, so you don't have to actually configure or install anything, except for a couple of things. So, because it's, of course, the Ansible Automation Platform uses a little bit of resources, let's go ahead and set this guy up for eight CPUs, and let's give it a little bit of extra memory. You can get away with six, but Sometimes I've had, the I've had the best luck with eight. So now let's do a CRC start. You can ignore those error messages. It's trying to talk to the API. Oh, so this is the fun part. So you're going to need a pull secret. So the way that you get that is you will go to cloud.redhat.com. Log into console. The way I get to this is go to the OpenShift link here. When you click on Create Clusters, you should be able to download a pull secret. Yep, go to lo Create OpenShift Cluster Local and download pull secret. You can also just copy it, which is probably the best bet. Just copy it and then paste here. And that basically tells it how to talk to get all of the containers from the registry. So you get all of the Red Hat approved containers. So I'm going to go ahead and pause right now. This is going to probably take about five to 10 minutes to set up. And then we can go ahead and set up the uh, Ansible operator. And we're back. I actually finished about 10 seconds after I paused. So now once you're in here, you can click right here, go into it. And we're going to deploy a controller. But if you notice, there's lots of other options here. You can do Automation Hub. You can do backups and restores. But let's just go ahead and create an instance of Automation Controller. You can leave it as example. Click Create. And being an impatient guy, I'm going to go here. And what you can see here is all the different things that will come up. Whenever this is done installing, you'll get a URL and a link where you can click to get the password. But if you want us to watch what's going on here, you can click on resources and you can see that it's building all of the things that it needs behind the scenes here. So it's building your Postgres database, setting up all of your secrets and configurations, setting up your config maps, so mapping all of the different things into the different containers. Okay, here we are five minutes later. So let's make this a little bit bigger for everybody here. So if you look under your resources, you have a, a running pod here for your example that we created. 
You go to details, we actually have a web address and a password. So let's go grab this password real quick. So you go down here and you can just copy it. You can also reveal it if you need to. Let's go back to where we were and let's open up this new uh, website that we created. Username is admin, password is what we just copied. Okay, here we are, we're logged in. Now, of course, it's going to ask you if you have a subscription. So you can just do username and password here. And I will put in mine. And when you click get subscription, it should find subscriptions. But okay, so here's the thing I learned. If you type your password wrong, which I obviously just did, it will give you an error that says that you don't have subscriptions. If you don't have a subscription in here, you can also click on the request button and the request button should put something in here. It normally takes 10 to 15 minutes for it to populate. So look here, we have a 60 day product trial. Let's select that guy. Next, insights so it can send analytics and give you information from what's going on. Our end user license agreement and submit. And once this is done spinning, we will have a working, yep, save successful, redirecting to dashboard. And there we go. Voila, here is a running Ansible automation platform that you can now go ahead and start automating in. So I really hope this was helpful for everybody and really enjoyed doing this for you. And I look forward to seeing what you guys do with this. So please, any anything that you see that can be done better in this, please put in an issue on the GitHub and please feel free to reach out. Thanks a lot. Take care.